Hi guys, I just wanted to take a quick moment to just hmm, point something out to you that one or two people um, don't take into consideration and it's to do with the colour of the background upon which you have your images when you're processing them. Um, I did a one-to-one -one tutorial uh, for a guy the other day and he'd been sending me one or two pictures and they were all too contrasty, too saturated and when I actually got round to his house and we turned his computer on um, I understood why and that's simply because um, when he processes in Lightroom he processes on a white background and I said to him, I said, why on earth do you process on a white background? He said, well, before I found your YouTube channel, he said, I used to follow so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Um, two guys on YouTube, uh, both of whom process their images on a white background. And he told me who they were. I, I actually had a good guess as to who they were. And uh, no, no, no names, no patreon. But because he'd seen them processing on a white background he thought he'd got to do it as well and he does it all the time or he was until I sort of put him straight and the thing I want to show you in today's video is to do with the colour of your background it doesn't round we're going to be working in um, Lightroom but it, it equally applies to Photoshop as well and we're just going to contemplate just a few pictures and um, try and make them a, a little bit different from each other and first of all we've got this um, what you might term high speed sports action wildlife catcher and we're not trying to make a a super duper gallery image out of this the whole essence of the point of this image is actually capturing the action of in this case this beautiful black labrador superb gun dog belongs to a friend of mine um, beautiful dog beautiful dog uh, but anyway we digress so white backgrounds when I teach people to process their images the one thing i do teach them um, which is more important than a lot of people take into consideration is a viewing your image small and b changing the color of the background viewing your image small allows you to view the image in context even um, at a fit to screen view you struggle to because the image is so big and in your face you struggle to see the actual amount of visual impact that the image contains whereas if you take it out to a small view you know you think if somebody's walking in through a gallery and they face in the back wall of the gallery and your image is hanging there it will appear very small to them and what you want is an image with enough visual grab, visual impact, to actually make them walk towards your image and ignore everybody else's. Um, I'm not saying this image would do that, but, you know, it's as it is. But looking at this image um, in this, at this small scale on a white background, um, if we were to begin to process this image on this white background we would be tempted to maybe throw a bit more contrast into it maybe throw a little bit more brightness into it and also maybe some more saturation and that would be wrong if I swap the background color out to black wow now we see how bright the images we get a much better idea of the degree of saturation in those greens and we just get a better handle on where our processing is at and 
it's all to do with perception these two things you've got in the front of your head um, are wired to this thing you've got up here yeah underneath the top of your skull called your brain and the thing is that these in conjunction with that mm, tell a few porky pies they really do and um, the world doesn't look like it is like the way you see it um, a camera does not see the world in the way that you perceive it so what you've got to do is to get a accurate perception of where your image is at without any distraction and of course a big distraction will be a white background now as i said it's all to do with perception and when you initially bring an image into the likes of lightroom or photoshop or whether you use affinity photo or on one or anything else you do really need to stay away from viewing the image on a white background for the simple reason that it skews your perception of your image it will make it look low contrast for a start which will then make you be tempted to pour more contrast into it and really and truly that's wrong this whole concept of um, background color not only does it affect the way you uh, perceive your image while you're processing and let's face it that's really important because it's your perception of your image initially which then makes you decide on the different actions you're going to take uh, during the processing of said image so your perception needs to be relatively accurate now i'm not saying that a black black background is accurate it's extreme so it, it shows you your image at its extreme and you can see that ostensibly there's for what the image is it looks damn good from a processing point of view lightroom's default process color is this dark gray and i strongly suggest that you leave it there or if you've got another color set use this because this is relatively neutral but also at the same time it gives you a pretty accurate perception of what's going on inside your image i'm going to switch this back to a white background and move on to a, another image and here we've got this musk ox um, on Doverfell, shot on a very very overcast and blustery day and mm, it looks a little bit flat um, not quite as airy as it could do now bear in mind that I'm not making any changes to the image all I'm making changes to is to is the way you perceive the image due to the surrounding background and if we go and switch this out to a black background now the image looks a lot brighter the other place that this comes into being or comes into comes into being on the hell am i on about the other place um, this co becomes important is when you choose a frame when you choose a mat to go inside that frame to add a border to your image and also where you actually hang the image as well um, because it's the same thing if you've got a wall here or you've got a frame here with a mat around the image the actual color of the mat the actual expanse of the mat the edge of the frame and the wall that the frame is mounted on will all change the viewer's perception of your image yeah so it, this is really important and not a lot of i never see people talking about this on the likes of YouTube unless we're talking about um, really serious photographers such as good old Nick Carver 
over in the US and I've, I've mentioned Nick Carter before and I really do think you ought to go and subscribe to uh, Nick's channel but anyway sort of moving on a little bit because I don't want this video to drag on if we go to another image now this is a class illustration um, we've got a barn owl in low light very very early morning light sitting on this post and when you look at this image on a on a very pale or white background it basically looks like this is a portrait shot with a black canvas extension on the right hand side of it doesn't it if we now look at that on a black background now once your eyes have got over the initial shock i do hope this some of the effect doesn't get lost in video compression and um, now you can definitely see that across this entire right hand side we've got proper delineation of the frame area and there isn't a single tone or hue in this entire right hand um, half of empty space we shoot this for editorial um, make a nice double page spread and then we can have text down here reversed out or whatever but you you've got to admit that nothing in this area is black and um, if we take that up to a lightroom default darker gray you'll notice it starts to get a little bit lost so you if i was processing this image from scratch all over again or i was actually going to finalize it i might actually lighten this area up just a little bit but of course if it was processing on a white background i would think i would have to lighten this area up a heck of a lot more than i actually do and to lighten it up on a white ground to a place where it look right it would just look awful and um, so there we go if we move on to another image now we've got an astro image here and um, astro images can be quite problematic um, when in the viewing conditions you use to ascertain whether you finish processing it or not because ostensibly they look like super low contrast images but really and truly they're not um, because they have certain things in them called stars and uh, Mars here which isn't a star it's a planet and we've got the Milky Way there and yeah they are very very bright in comparison to all the other areas of the scene so in actual fact hmm, you could class them as very high contrast images but the high contrast hmm, you know 50 60 70 percent of the high contrast is very localized so your main point of interest in the image is of course the milky way which looks quite dull and our lead to the image or what grounds the actual astro shell is your foreground landscape and this looks doesn't look too bad in the rocks but here in this um can we call it middle foreground i mean it's about two miles away but you know um but here in this middle foreground area and down in these corners it looks very gloomy and very flat and wishy-washy at the same time there isn't really a lot of either luminance detail in there or color detail however if we were to view that on a black background suddenly wow look at everything that we can see inside this middle foreground area is this bottom corner gloomy no it isn't it's what you'd expect from an image shot at about half past midnight so it, it looks okay and if we go for a default darker gray you see we're still keeping the majority of this if you like correct perception of the image but again if we go to a white background it just looks awful it looks too dark but of course it isn't because it's exactly the same image we haven't made any changes to the image itself all we're doing is changing the perception of the image by changing the background color so if we move on to another image now 
Um, yeah, um, this is quite a big image. This is a five, is it a five, five shot stitch, something like that. We'll just take this out to a one to sixteen view, and on a white background, this area does definitely wishy washy, wishy washy. What a lovely, mm, lovely technical term that is. But it, it looks low contrast. There doesn't look a lot of detail in it. There certainly doesn't look, appear to be a lot of colour in it. And of course, because it's shot on a heavy overcast day, there isn't going to be a lot of colour in it and a lot of luminosity. But we're not getting an accurate perception of the image. Again, if we take this down onto a black ground, now we're getting a super, super accurate perception of the image. We've got a lot more uh, luminance detail, um, a lot more um, light and dark tonal detail, uh, tonal variation, and we've also got quite a bit of subtle colour variation in there as well. If we come up to um, this shot now, and uh, Sessile Oaks over in uh, Derbyshire, now, if I go and put this on a white background, this area here, which is quite interesting actually, uh, because it's misty but full of detail, and uh, these corners here, they don't look at their very best at all, and these corners look dark. So if we were actually processing on this white background, then wouldn't we be tempted to lighten these corners up? Um, wouldn't you be tempted to maybe add a bit more contrast in there when in actual fact let's just go and put this on a darker grey background now you can see these corners and this foreground is lit up and of course in here is just how we want it it's just try it on a black background yeah now we can see exactly the levels of luminance and colour saturation that we've got going on in the foreground in the middle ground in this medium far distance here and where the sun is trying to punch its way through the mist through the fog and we've got this beautiful sort of highlight very soft highlight going on over here and yeah this image is ready to go to print and of course when we think about printing we know we're going to have to print on white paper because it is the whiteness of the paper which actually allows us when we're printing on e uh, printing by inkjet anyway it is the whiteness of the paper that allows us to see the various degrees of luminosity and um, color that we've got contained in our image but really and truly if we print the image with a lot of white around it you will be tantamount to doing that and the actual amount of white that you leave on the edges of your print can actually change the way a let's let's put it like this a third party viewer when they're looking at the print it can change the way they perceive it and they might think it looks a little bit dark it looks a bit flat and uh, in reality of course we know it isn't so even when it comes to printing as i said before it's all to do with the mat the frame does it complement does it amplify does it lend itself in terms of color and size to the actual image that you're mounting in the frame and also where you are actually going to hang that frame does it make the best you might be hanging it in great light levels but if you were to hang this on a pale blue wall it would look awful and let's face it when people see a picture hanging on a wall they don't just see the picture they see the mat the frame and the wall as well or parts of the wall so it is a contextual mix which has to look right so the way your background complements your image is one very key important factor that a lot of people don't ever talk about on blogs or on YouTube and of course if it's not talked about on YouTube and it's not talked about at workshops and not written in blogs 
than very few guys who were trying to learn how to improve their photography very few of them will actually have that pointed out to them and it can lead to disappointment in printing uh, for no good reason because there's nothing wrong with the image um, so we'll just switch this out to a white ground again and move on to the last image and um, yeah <laughs> yeah very very sort of uh, boring pack shot um, stainless steel cutlery yeah lit from overhead with a um, double diffused light uh, with a scrim so we've got a warm spot basically falling through a double diffuser onto the stainless steel cutlery and then feathering off and uh, quite a boring shot but it's also quite a difficult shot for you to pull off unless you know what you're doing and you know how to light it and photograph it and your angles and angles of reflection and uh, this is the sort of thing that I cut my teeth on uh, when I was at college studying photography and forcing yourself to do this sort of imagery will always make you a better photographer even if you're only interested in photographing wildlife or you're only interested in photographing landscapes you can't go out and photograph wildlife every day you can't go out and photograph landscapes every day but you can make yourself a nice little set and uh, a couple of cheap flash guns and uh, a couple of cheap wooden frames and some cheap rolls of tracing paper and you too can learn how to do this and uh, yeah it's it's one of those shots that sells very well for stock because it's got so many uses i really ought to do more of it but this image looks fairly monochrome monochromatic it is a full color image mind you it's accurately white balanced doesn't have the saturation removed from it and i can tell you now from a technical perspective it is as near perfect as you're going to get um, I'm not too keen on the black reflection there but anyway it's beside the point but from a tonal point of view it is as near perfect as you're going to get but it looks awful so if you were trying to process this on this white background you would instantly want to throw more contrast in and turn up the highlights a little bit or do we let's just swap that out to a black background oh my god no we don't need to add any contrast and we don't need to turn any brightness up uh, let's go and view it on a dark gray background lightroom default and yeah that still looks fine but of course processing on a white background looks bloody awful so my advice to you guys because remember just remember this is my advice I'm not telling you this is the way you should do it but my advice never ever ever process on a white background N only ever process on either darker grey as Lightroom calls it you, sometimes you might get away with a dark grey mm, yeah um, Photoshop um, used to be on that medium grey and you can see this image it, it's still looking okay but it's just starting to turn a little bit on the dull side Lightroom's always been um, either dark grey or darker grey and they are the two best background colours to process on because they are neutral and they do not weight the eye brain combo too much uh, whereas you get an awful lot of visual perception waiting i'm not talking about waiting in a queue i'm talking about waiting heavy um bias in other words your eyes become biased to this white which then makes this look intrinsically dull flat and boring so if we switch out to a darker gray then everything in the garden is rosy because this has a fairly neutral bias to average human vision and then of course the other valuable thing 
always view your image contextually in other words zoomed out because then you get an accurate picture of all sorts of things composition um, symmetry of crop if you're working with a cropped image central um, centralized composition in this case for this particular shot all sorts of benefits to looking at your image small do not process small always process at a one-to-one -one view or if you're doing something very very delicate so you were trying to clone in this little area here in Photoshop I might actually be working at a 200 300 400 percent magnification when I'm doing something like that but always coming out to a one-to-one -one view then going out to a fit to screen view and then going out to a con sort of a contextual view if you if you don't quite grasp my meaning why, why do you think they actually give you the ability to do this in Lightroom it's there for a reason not for fun anyway I hope you've uh, found that little tip useful guys and um, just remember don't process on a white background it's not good it isn't makes you do all sorts of nasty horrible things that are not warranted and uh, yeah so until next week guys um hope you've got something out of that and uh, i shall see you again soon so uh, if you've enjoyed this don't forget go click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed click the little ringety tingety bell uh, to get a notification the next time i put a video up and uh, i shall see you very soon so until the next time Two root.